Okay, let's talk about how to solve a proportion. And this is fundamental basic mathematics. And proportions are everywhere at all levels of mathematics, especially uh, in middle school and high school and beyond. So you definitely need to know how to solve proportion problems. And a related topic uh, with that would be dealing with rates and ratios. Typically, if you're studying rates and ratios, you're also studying proportions. But we're going to focus in on just uh, proportions. And we're going to do this problem here in just one second. And that is 8 is to 15 as x is to 45. Obviously, we're trying to determine the value of x that makes this statement true. And this would be a very classic type of proportion problem. So if you've been confused about what a proportion is and how to solve one, well, stick around. I'm going to explain all of this. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. But uh, let's go ahead and get into proportions. And I guess we should start by answering these two questions here. So the first is, what is a proportion? We use that word everywhere, right? We say, oh, this thing is in proportion to this, or these are proportional. So this is a, um, a uh, term, okay, this word we really need to understand. And once we understand what a proportion is, we really need to understand how do we solve a proportion problem. So let's uh, go ahead and define what a proportion is right now. But I'm curious, do you think you know what a proportion is? In your own words, go ahead and put that into the comment section because your, your uh, definition is probably going to be somewhat accurate, okay? Um, again, it might not be technically 100% uh, correct, but you, I'm sure you have a pretty good sense of what this word means because we do, you know, it is a common word. Hey, these things are in proportion. Or, you know, you're cooking in a kitchen and it says, hey, this is the proportion to use this recipe. You get the idea. We've heard this word a lot. But uh, from a purely mathematical uh, definition, a proportion is two equal fractions. So let's take a look at uh, two fractions. Let's uh, look at one fraction here. Let me write that a little bit better. One half. And now let's think of another fraction that is equal to one half. Let's just keep it simple. How about 3 over 6? We could have 5 over 10, 4 over 8. You get the idea. You can have any number of different fractions. But this is a proportion, okay? A proportion is two equal fractions. That is basically what a proportion is in mathematics. So that answers our first question. Hey, what is proportion? It's two equal fractions. So our, now our second question is, how do we solve a proportion? Well, there's a couple different methods that you can um, apply or think of uh, to solve a proportion, but by far the most common way to um, solve a proportion or think about that is using something called the cross product. There's some other fancy uh, words in there called the means and the extremes, but just I want you to remember this term here, the cross product, because this is very descriptive okay it's cross and product product means multiplication and cross means go across like this so let me show you exactly what the cross product uh, is so if you have a proportion okay now here's how it goes if you have a proportion i.e you have two um, uh, fractions that are equal then the cross product is um, are, the cross products are equal so in other words when we multiply on a, in a crisscross way, okay, this is what it, uh, we're talking about, one times six, that's gonna be equal to the product of this right here. And again, there's other fancy terms called the means and extreme, but let's take a look at this. So one times six, let's write that right here, is going to be equal to two times three. And we could see that in fact, this is in uh, the case, let me give myself some room, one times six is six, two times three is six, so they are equal, the cross products are equal. So this is the main idea that you need to know about proportions. One, proportions are two equal fractions, and two, the cross product is equal, or the cross products are equal when you have a valid proportion. Okay, so now, with that being said, let's take a look at our actual problem. And the first thing we need to do is write a proportion here. So we have 8 is to 15 as x is to 45. So again, very classic type of proportion problem. So let's go ahead and interpret this. So 8 is to 15. So the way you um, interpret a problem like this, when you're saying 8 is to 15, what this means is uh, you're going to set up a fraction, and you're going to think of it as this, 8 
and the fraction bar here is the word 2. Okay, 8 is to 15. Okay, so that's how you interpret this. This is the numerator, this is the denominator, the 2 is the division symbol, but you want to set this up as a fraction. Okay, so 8 is to 15. This is 8 is to 15 as, okay, is our equal sign, as x is to 45. So x is going to be our numerator, okay, and 45 will be our denominator. Okay, again, you're going to set this up in the same manner. So if you, um, you know, were confused about this, this is basically what you need to do. Anytime you see the word two, okay, and this is uh, what we call a ratio type of problem. That's not as important um, uh, right now in this particular video because we're just going to focus in on uh, if, uh, proportions. But anytime you see the word two or per, actually, let's do this real quick. If I had 80 miles per hour, this word per, as it's very similar to the word two, means 80 miles per, this is a fraction bar, one hour. Okay, so again, we always want to write rates and ratios as fractions because we want to use these concepts of proportions. Okay, so we want to express things as fractions. And that is the kind of like the first major step to do this problem. Okay, so eight is to 15, eight is to 15 as x is to 45, x is to 45. So what we've done here is set up a proportion, okay? We're saying one fraction is equal to another fraction. So again, you're like, oh, this is a proportion because we're saying this um, two fractions are equal. Now to solve for x, what do we need to do? Well, we're going to go ahead and use the cross product, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So it would start this way. So 15 times x is 15x. We're going to use some basic algebra here. And 8 times 45, we'll just write that right there, 8 times 45. And then you can get your calculator out to help you out. 15x is equal to 8 times 45 is 360. So to solve this basic equation, what do I need to do to solve for x? I need to divide both sides of the equation by 15. So x is going to be equal to 360 divided by 15, which of course is 24. Okay, so that is our answer, but let's go ahead and check that. Let's make sure this makes sense. So x is 24. So this is going to be 24. That's the number here that we're saying is going to uh, make this uh, into two equal fractions. But let's go ahead and check that now. Okay, let's replace this x with a 24, and let's see if this makes sense. So we have the fraction 8 fifteenths, and we're saying that's uh, equal to the fraction 24 over 45. Well, if you reduce this fraction, 24 over 45, 3 goes into 24, 8, and 3 goes into 45, 15. Well, look at the fraction we get, 8 fifteenths. That is the same as this uh, left-hand side has an 8 15, and you can see the right-hand side is also uh, 8 fifteenths. Another thing you could do is see that our cross product will be equal. So if you take 15 times 24, that's gonna be equal to eight times 45, or you can just reduce that fraction if you just wanted to just verify that in fact you got this right. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may wanna check out my Algebra One or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.